baby, you are going to go broke showing turkeys like these. Now we're talking turkey. Gobble, gobble, motherfucker. It's turkey time. Gobble, gobble. Longfellow Deeds is a small town guy. Chuck Cedars. Handshakes are for strangers, pal. We <laughs> hug around here, buddy. What's up? What's up? And he's about to get. When Mr. Blake died, he left an enormous fortune. He left it all to you, Deeds. Forty billion dollars. Holy shit. Just a small town guy. So this is where my uncle lives? Yes, sir. Boy, you kind of snuck up on me there. I am very, very sneaky, sir. This season. I want that guy's life story. I'm all over this. But you should let me go undercover. This could get dangerous. No, he said he likes ladies in distress. One man will teach the big city. Way to go, honestly. How would be mugged? Don't worry, I'll get him. Some small town values. <laughs> Are you okay? I just need to walk it off. Could you? Sure, sure. <laughs> From Columbia Pictures. I met this girl. I think she's the one. I'm from a little town in Iowa. What part? Winchesterton Field. Phil? Money might change his world. Where are you taking me? That's a surprise. Well. Winchesterton Field, Phil, Iowa. You gotta be shitting me. But nothing can change his heart. Wow. Woo! Adam Sandler. I got wicked bad frostbite when I was in the Scouts. So you could, like, jump on it and it wouldn't hurt me. I would really rather not, sir. Oh, please, please jump on my foot. No! Ah! You're sick! You're sick! Why would you do that to me? I'm just kidding you, pal. We know the writer. And I'm telling him everything. I see why you brought me here. Do you have any idea how much you hurt him? I would do anything to take back what I did to him. I'm sorry. All I heard was blah, blah, blah. I'm a dirty tramp. Mr. Deeds. Put some steam on it, kid. Ooh, that got you right in the throat, huh? <laughs> Gotta ask you, though, if it hits you, is it my point or yours? Yo. Well, I'm winning then, I guess. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Let's Talk Turkeys. I'm Movie Miss, and this is part two of our episode on the Adam Sandler sort of a rom-com, Mr. Deeds. When we were last here, there was a dirty deal going on. Uh, Marty was giving information to, uh, I want to say, Chuck. Yeah, that's right, in the showers. <laughs> He said he had some dirt that he was going to give him to get Deeds out of town. And then we saw that Chuck had a secret meeting with Babe's boss at Inside Access, I believe it's called. So that's where we left off. All the dirty dealings were happening. And now we're going to jump right to a scene with Deeds and Babe. So let's get right back into the action. So Deeds and Babe now are in his jet flying to a surprise location. He's surprising her. They land at a town in Iowa. And the sign on the airfield there says the town's name that she made up earlier in the film. Do you remember what it was? Uh, Winchesterton Fieldville. Yeah, it's a real place apparently in, the, in this movie. And he takes her there to surprise her. They go into a diner. And of course, nobody recognizes her. And she lies some more. She lies her way through this whole scene. And then he takes her to the house that she described to him. Red door, blue shutters, tire swing in the front yard. Look, it's your house that you grew up in. And she's like, oh, shit. <laughs> I love her expression, too. Like, of course, of course you found all this. Like, yes, that this is going to happen. Even though this is a sweet gesture by him and would be romantic and would be thoughtful and sweet, it's completely negated by the fact that this is like her going, oh, shit, <laughs> this was all something real. Like, now I'm fucked. So anything that could have been sweet or romantic is immediately just, you know, extinguished by her being like, oh, fuck, now what? It was just, yeah, not not good. So three little kids answer the door and they look like they are related to that little kid from Jerry Maguire. <laughs> oh, yeah. They all looked like little Jonathan Lipnickies or whatever his name is. Little blonde hair and the glasses. I was waiting for one of them to say the human head weighs eight pounds. <laughs> Dogs and bees can smell fear, guys. Come on in. <laughs> they just open the door and let them in to the house. No parents anywhere to be found. They just start wandering around the house. She's making comments about, oh, this is the dining room. We used to sit in here and eat food that was cooked. This was my brother's room. And she opens a door and it's a closet. And she's like, 
they didn't like him very much. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's it's just stupid. I didn't find any of it of it funny to me. Well, you're laughing now, so apparently it must have lost some kind of mark. Because it's so dumb. Like her lies are so obvious and so dumb. Yeah, He's still not catching on. And then one kid confronts her and says, hey, my dad built this house with his hands six years ago. Like, this could not be the house you grew up in. And she's all, well, your dad lies. I was like, what? That's a little dark. What a horrible thing to say to a child. Then one of the children starts to choke on his gum because they're all smacking gum as they're walking through the house. And that bothered me (laughs) because I don't like food noises and chewing noises. I I thought it was pretty funny because you could hear him just going... Oh, I hate that so much. (laughs) I go crazy because my husband sits within a couple feet of me when we're eating and I can just hear him. Even if he keeps his mouth closed, I can hear him chewing and it just makes me crazy. (laughs) So this kid's choking. And of course, she says she's a school nurse. She's lied about her job this whole time. So Deeds looks at her like, you're a nurse, save the kid. And she's like, Oh, yeah. So she very violently manages to get him to spit it out and not choke. And the scene ends with the kid smiling that she saved him. And we see he's missing a front tooth because she effectively slammed his head on the banister there. (laughs) The kid's missing a tooth. So we cut to nighttime in New York City. Deeds is dropping Babe at her apartment. And as they're hanging out on the stoop there, we get a shot of Marty across the street filming them with the hidden camera, dressed like a woman. <laughs> I, I just don't know. Why? Why? It's, uh, <laughs> like I said, they, they really needed that. They really needed this him in every scene in a stupid outfit. So Babe says Deeds needs to just go back home to New Hampshire. Go back home rich. Don't let anybody else hurt you. He stops her from going in and tells her that he made a card for her with a picture of the chicken parmesan that she ordered on their first date. He drew it on the cover of the card. I actually thought that was kind of cute. I was like, aw. <laughs> when a guy remembers something like that, that's that's really sweet. So he reads the poem, or no, I'm sorry. She reads the poem out loud from the card and starts to like tear up and cry a little bit through this card. So now I will read it for you. Have a tissue ready because it's really sappy sweet. You might cry. So, (laughs) hard to breathe, feels like floating, so full of love, my heart is exploding, mouth is dry, hands are shaking, my heart is yours for the taking. Acting weird, not myself, dancing around like a Keebler elf. (laughs) Finally time for this poor schlub to know how it feels to fall in love. Love. Love? With a B. Oh, I thought he said love. Okay. No, love. It is, it's love because nothing nothing rhymes with schlub. Okay. Well, that makes it even stupider now. God dang it. No, no. See, that brings the whole movie together now. Like that whole <laughs> poem and you understanding now brings the whole movie together. And now you can understand it and appreciate it. So she gets all teared up, like I said, and emotional and she kisses him. But then as she's going up the steps again, she says she's so sorry, really, really sorry, goes inside and he leaves and she is just like double down on the floor, like bawling uncontrollably. So you can tell that she feels horrible. Deeds decides to walk home and does one of those little jump, click your heels together in the air moves, tries to do it over some trash cans and falls over the trash. (laughs) And he's yelling like, I'm in love or I I love New York City, I think is what he says, actually. And some guy goes, we don't care <laughs> or who cares? Shut up. Like the asshole New Yorker yelling, you know, I, I do. I love that part because that is pretty funny. I, I like when they do that in movies. So later now, Babe tells her boss she is, in fact, in love with Deeds and she's going to see him later tonight and tell him everything. Her boss gets angry with her for a minute and they go back and forth. And then he just gets surprisingly calm and decides to take the news well, which is very out of character for him. So when that happens, you just know something is up his sleeve. Like what's going on? Why is he being so cool about this? It's not right. You can sense the evil. 
Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And then I remembered, oh, yeah, he struck a deal with Chuck. What is going to happen now? And you don't know. Say suspense. Say you, you were criticizing earlier. That suspense. They weren't giving enough. Yeah. <laughs> so we cut to uh, Madison Square Garden, the basketball court. I guess the Knicks play there. Yeah. Wait, isn't that the one from Godzilla? Yeah, Ma- Madison Square Garden. It's like, yeah, you got like the Knicks, uh, WWF or WWF oh, okay. at the time, WWE. A lot, a lot of things happen in Madison Square Garden. Godzilla attacks it. You're right. Lays his eggs in there <laughs> or her eggs. I don't know. Is it he see a boy or a girl, Godzilla? Uh, I believe hermaphroditic. Like a frog that can spontaneously change its gender. Yeah. So Deeds has a message on the scoreboard that says, uh, I love you, Pam Dawson, or something like that. And he's got a romantic table set up with dinner of chicken parm from their first date. A violinist is there. And of course, Emilio is there. He uses Emilio as a stand-in for Pam at the table to test out if the flowers are too tall. And he goes through how he's going to propose to Pam with his, he's got the ring and the whole thing. And it's a cute little scene, but very weird because the foot fetish thing with Emilio pops up, which killed the vibe for me. I mean, it should be creepy. It really should be. But because it comes from Emilio and the way that he says it, it's hilarious to me. I don't, um, I don't kink shame or fetish shame. Like that's fine. Whatever people who like feet go for it. But in this scene, it seemed out of place to me because he's trying to do this sweet little romantic practice proposal. (laughs) I don't know. I think it's because because there's quite a few scenes that have that moment where it can go one way or the other. Are you going to go comedy or are you going to go like romantic? And they kind of blow it with, you know, oh, we're going to throw comedy in a place where it shouldn't be. So I see what you're saying. So just then Chuck and Cecil show up and Chuck says it's time for the show. And he puts on inside access on the big screen and they all watch. And then (laughs) we see. The dude who turns on the system is Marty with gray hair and an eye patch. So what I didn't understand (laughs) in this part was, is this Marty in a disguise or is he just playing the dude that works there who has the gray hair and the eye patch, who runs the sound system for Madison Square Garden? Uh, That's a good question. I'm going to say he's playing the dude. Yeah, you can't tell. They don't make it clear in the scene. I thought that that's weird. So the inside access is uh, Babe's boss exposing Babe as they all watch and saying, Pam Dawson really is a reporter, Babe Bennett. But he doesn't say reporter. I think he says producer, one of the show's producers. I thought it was like, yeah, so, like either like reporter, producer, or pro- I, I, I could yeah. have swore like they kind of hinted at reporter, but didn't like confirm it. No, they say, I believe it's either this scene or a different scene, but he calls her a producer. And I'm like, okay, movie pick. What is she (laughs) this whole time? What is she? So she arrives back in the shadows. We see her. She sees all of this happening. She yells out to deeds. I came to try and explain. He gets upset, walks off in the other direction and she leaves also. So they don't, they don't talk here. So later, Deeds is packing as Chuck and Cecil watch, and he tells them he feels like a real sucker, but he can't run the company. He doesn't belong in New York, so he's going to go ahead and go. Deeds says, fine, I'll sign the papers. He doesn't want the money. He says, give it to charity. I don't want it. And I like that he doesn't even know what charity to give it to. And he looks at them and Cecil just goes, uh, he feels real on the spot. He just goes, uh, the United Negro College Fund? <laughs> like, that's the first thing he could think of. I just, Cecil just, he just had this, uh, he was such a good character in this. He's another one that just, like, I, I thought they did a really good job with him. So they ask Deeds, can they give you a lift? You know, let us let us take you home in, in our jet. You know, you can, and he's like, no, no, I'll find my own way home. And I'm like, really? Okay. And he takes his one suitcase and leaves. And then we just see smug, satisfied Chuck. I just wanted to slap his face. (laughs) It really irritated me how happy he was, how this turned out. Then we see Deeds hitchhikes his way home. And he gets to his pizzeria and he tears down all the greeting cards off his wall. Like he's so defeated and so bummed and like jaded from being in new york now it like changed him (laughs) he's so upset new york will do that to you apparently (laughs) (laughs) then we get a quick shot 
of a man sitting at his desk and the nameplate on his desk says uh, United Negro College Fund. And he opens a check for $40 billion and he just faints like his falls over. <laughs> I love that reaction because I could I could see like people at charities if they ever get big donations like that actually doing that shit. Like I, I can't believe we actually got this amount of money. So then now we see Babe walks into the pizzeria and Jan is there. She calls Babe a tramp, a slut, and she's not letting her near deeds. No way. Babe says, I have to see him. I feel awful. I have to explain myself to him. Jan says, fine, if you can get past me, I'll tell you where you can find him. So Jan preps, this made me laugh, cracks her knuckles, cracks her neck, cracks her back. Like she's like ready to brawl, rolls her sleeves up. And she's like, come at me, little girl. Like she's ready. <laughs> Babe takes a running start at Jan and immediately gets clotheslined. <laughs> Knocks her right down. And she goes, I was a rodeo clown for six years. <laughs> oh my God. This did make me laugh. I loved Jan. But then I immediately did not like it anymore because Babe thinks she's going to be so funny and tricky. She goes, oh, I have to do better. You mean like this? And kicks her in the crotch. Just brings her foot right up to contact with Jan. And it's not effective because Jan is like, I don't have balls, you moron, or something, whatever she says. I don't have balls. And picks yeah. by Babe up and tosses her WWE style right onto a fucking table. And then Jan grabs a pizza cutter and says she's going to cut Babe <laughs> into eight slices of bitcheroni. <laughs> it was so stupid. Because then Babe throws pizza dough onto Jan's face drop kicks her like Mortal Kombat style onto the floor. And then Jan gives up. She's like, okay, you got me. I'll tell you where he is. I have no problem with that scene. Uh, I, I mean, aside from like some of the stuff, like being a wrestling fan, I get tired of like, no one gets the clothesline right. Like it's immediately, everyone just, oh, we run and you hold your arm out and like, oh, we're going to do this big 360 flip because you run into the arm. That's not how a clothesline works. <laughs> Clo clothesline is like, you got to go running into it and then you extend your arm and you hit that shit hard. That's how a clothesline works. <laughs> I love that this, this is where you draw the line because the clothesline was not correct according to wrestling standards. Exactly. <laughs> if you are going to mimic... I think I just killed her. <laughs> oh, if, my God. If you were going to mimic a fake sport, at least get the fake property correct. This is how it works. But Fair. I mean, other than that, it's like, like I thought the fight scene was, was entertaining. And Jan could have kicked her ass, but she respected the fact that Babe kept coming at her and was like, I'm going to fight no matter what. So she's like, okay, I'll give up and tell you. You must really, really care about him if, to go to these lakes. Is, yeah, yeah. Like, like like Jan did not give up because she was defeated. She's like, no, I would have got it. She would have got up and beat the shit out of her. But it was like, okay, well, I'll let you slide. So we cut to Deeds delivering a pizza to Crazy Eyes in his little shack out in the snow in the middle of nowhere. Did you catch when he says what kind it is? Oh, I don't remember it because it was it was another weird ass one. Peanut butter and gumballs. <laughs> That's what? what it was. I remember hearing it and I was like, that made me actually want the French fries and Oreos one because <laughs> this one was so bad. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, French fry and Oreo, sign me up. But peanut butter and gumballs? No, thank you. <laughs> no, that's a weird. And, and I, this is coming from a person who I liked the ice cream that had the gumballs in it as a kid that was I did actually too, honestly yeah like that was a good flavor of ice cream but peanut butter and gumballs oh that is a on, horrible on combination pizza with sauce and cheese and yeah yeah so, <laughs> he tells deeds that time heals all things except my crazy eyes <laughs> <laughs> so crazy eyes then tells deeds he heard that chuck tore apart Blake's company and fired a lot of nice people. And Deeds is like, how do you know that? He says he gets his info 
from the stock market channel that he watches because he suspects the anchor man is an evil leprechaun. <laughs> <laughs> the mailman's a wizard and the stock market guy is an evil leprechaun. Poor crazy eyes. So Babe is now trudging through the snow, following this little handwritten map on a napkin, trying to find Crazy Eye's cabin. She falls through some ice and is in the water, screaming for help. Deeds is nearby, riding his bike. He's leaving, but he hears her and he comes over. And I have a huge problem with this scene. This scene could have been. He sees her hanging on to that ice puddle, trying not to fall under and save her, pull her out. And then have this discussion about you're full of shit. Where's the camera? Blah, blah, blah. It does not go down that way. It goes down in the most ridiculous possible fashion. He stands there while she's struggling in the water and starts yelling at her about where's the camera? You're full of shit. Blah, blah, blah. She's like, I'm sorry. I I really love you. I'm so sorry. And he's bullshit, bullshit. So she slips under the water under the ice and starts to sink and move. And if you've ever seen any horror movie, The Dead Zone is a good example. When somebody falls under the water, under the ice like that, and they start to get pulled away from the opening, it is near impossible for them to get back to the opening to be saved. They usually die, unfortunately, in real life and in in TV and movies. That's a bad situation, which is why I was like, why didn't he first pull her out, then berate her? Don't leave her in the puddle. I got nothing. I mean, I I, I agree. My, my problem with is later when he saves her, like the way he saves her, I had an issue with that. Uh, well, that's where we're at. He saves her by taking out his dead black frostbitten foot and smashing it through the ice to make a hole where she has slipped to, to pull her out. I have a huge problem with that as well, because it's that whole, oh, that's why we had to make a big deal about his foot earlier in the film. Got it. Chekhov's frostbitten foot now comes back in the third act to save her. Fucking stupid. It didn't make any sense to me because it's like, okay, just because the foot's numb, it's like, well, that's got nothing to do with anything. Okay, okay yeah, you can put your your foot, just your foot in the water and not feel anything. That doesn't mean that your foot is strong enough to break the ice and then your <laughs> whole leg is going into the water. Bionic so foot, yeah. None of that works. <laughs> That just didn't like I, I, the the foot just being a stupid joke through the scene with the beating the shit out of it. I love it. It's hilarious. I, I don't care what anyone says. That makes me laugh. This part's just like okay, it doesn't make any sense. That that doesn't. And I do agree with the you should have pulled her out. You could have had the conversation, like you said. This is another moment where you had to make the decision: Are you an Adam Sandler movie or are you a romantic comedy? And I feel like they didn't really know where to go with that. Yeah. So he pulls her out. She's sitting there, supposed to be soaking wet, almost died. But she looks perfectly fine. Makeup's fine. She's not very wet. She looks fine. (laughs) She's sitting there talking to him, not shaking at all. Yeah, because she's Winona fucking Ryder. You can't ruin her. (laughs) She ruined herself. So no, she no one ruined. She cannot. No one can ruin Winona. Okay, it it, it is. Did we forget all about the embarrassing career ending for a short time? Shoplifting problem that she had did did we forget about that i guess yeah that never happened oh (laughs) hey i will say though i do love a comeback and the fact that she came back really strong with stranger things she's great on that she is and she's always been great so she (laughs) says here she really loves him she's so sorry and he says you know i don't really know who you are that's true because she's done nothing but lie to him So then we cut to Babe alone at a bar in New York City, drowning her sorrows in liquor. Marty comes over to apologize and he's holding some drinks and she just flips the drinks on him and back and like into the air and all over him. But uh, it was really weird because then it made me, it confirmed for me the fact that he really must have a thing for her because he's trying to slide back in here, (laughs) you know? So she sees on the TV now a report about how Chuck is stripping Blake's company down. All 50,000 employees will lose their jobs. And then the reporter realizes on air while he's reporting, he's one of them. (laughs) One of the employees who's going to lose their job. He's like, oh, shit. (laughs) I I love that with the whole 
the news reporter's reaction. I thought that was that was pretty clever with the, the son of a bitch. I forget what exactly he said, but it was like, oh shit, or son of a bitch, or something like that. He says, oh shit, I'm oh, one shit, of them. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I think it was like, oh shit, this sucks or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This sucks. <laughs> but I also thought it was weird timing because Crazy Eyes, I almost called them Crazy Legs, Crazy Eyes had seen the stock report that it had already happened. People lost their jobs and, it, you know, he's torn the company apart and, and it's all happened. And then here we find out it's not going to happen until the vote tomorrow between all the shareholders. It's weird timing, but I mean, like, logically, you could chalk it up to maybe just like the story got leaked. And that's yeah. what like, you know, kind of thing. We'll go with that. That's as good as any. <laughs> yeah. Hello, my spooky friends. This is your host, John, from Dairyland Frights, the paranormal podcast that covers everything spooky, creepy, and mysterious in the Midwest. Ah, this is actually John. Uh, I hope my spooky voice scared you. And in this podcast, we're going to have creepy guests and spooky tales and mysterious sightings of cryptids, UFOs, ghosts, and everything paranormal. So tune in if you dare to be scared. Nothing over $3 right now on the website trulyuniquejewelry.com. The website is now clearing out all of their inventory to make room for the new. Nothing over $3. Everything from necklaces, rosaries, rings, earrings, bracelets, extra extender chains, earring backs, every little thing you would need for your jewelry box, including gift boxes, all on clearance prices. So hop on over to trulyuniquejewelry.com. That's T-R-U-L-Y Y-O-U n-i-q-u-e jewelry.com it's one flat rate for shipping so fill that box or envelope as full as you can with everything on the website priced under three dollars that's truly unique jewelry.com and now back to the show so we cut to the shareholder meeting in this swanky waldorf astoria hotel where chuck is leading the meeting i just thought of something no you know what we're gonna go with the anchor on the stock channel is a leprechaun and so he magically got the message. And that's <laughs> how it happened. <laughs> Crazy Eyes was right the whole time. Then maybe his mailman really is a wizard. You know what? Maybe that explains the whole movie. <laughs> how? It's a mystical fantasy. Oh, okay. Cut to this meeting now. Chuck is leading it. And he says before they take the vote at noon for the buyout, they're all going to be very rich, but... First, the floor is opened to anyone who wants to speak out either for or against the buyout. Suddenly, Emilio pops up <laughs> right behind him on the stage. And I love the, the little music, you know, sting and the whooshing sound like whoosh. And then he appears. <laughs> I am very, very sneaky, sir. And he says, dismantling the company would be an insult to a great man. It cannot be allowed. And then suddenly he disappears again. <laughs> then Deeds walks in and says he'd like to make a statement. Chuck immediately claps back with, you, go, you don't get to speak because you sold all of your stock. So Deeds pulls out this paper certificate, one share of the company. So I am a stockholder. I have a share. I get to speak. Okay. Chuck says, <laughs> before he takes the mic, Good luck. You've got two minutes to persuade these people to start hating money. <laughs> good point. Very good point. So Deeds proceeds to give a giant heartfelt speech about helping people and having a good heart. Isn't that more important than the money? Okay. <laughs> um, I mean, he's right. He, he Technically, he's right. But I mean, like, you know, money. Right is about what? Too about you know like helping people is more important than money is it, it like whose be. perspective i deeds mean you can make this speech chuck chuck doesn't think that you well, know what yeah, i'm saying like I mean, De deeds is trying to tell all these people who make a tremendous amount of money don't like your money like you don't need to make more money you're fine help people instead i, I mean they're they're not gonna they shouldn't fall for it because they're rich greedy people so they're gonna want more money but i mean deeds is hard as in the right place at least 
that's true he does talk about yeah when he was a little kid how he always wanted to be a fireman and help people and he starts getting people in the crowd to say out loud what they always wanted to be when they were little and people stand up and randomly yell stuff and the things that made me laugh was jan is there for some reason and she says i wanted to be a man and deeds is like that explains a lot (laughs) and then cecil cecil's like i wanted to be a ping pong champion (laughs) i I love it's like everything cecil does is just so like innocent it's like he just seems like he doesn't belong in that in that world of rich upper class snobbery (laughs) yeah agreed So Deeds goes on a rant about putting 50,000 people out of work just so that they can make a quick buck. He says there's still hope for the kids inside of us. And he adds, please don't break up the company. Everyone claps and cheers. He gets a standing ovation from all the shareholders. It's very anticlimactic, I thought. The the scene doesn't go on long. The speech isn't that convincing or good. Everybody seems to be way too affected by it. Whereas in real life, it's because it was a movie. They had to be in real life. I doubt that's the reaction he gets. (laughs) Yeah, no. But at the same time, I think I kind of felt like you were kind of written into a corner. Like, how how are you going to get out of this? Like, you're, you're kind of stuck. So, yeah. Chuck says, well... That was all touching and everything. Good job. However, with my 300 million shares that you signed over to me, plus the 50 foreign investor shares, that gives me a majority of 51%. So I'm voting to sell. (laughs) The end. Just then, before he can slam down his little gavel, Babe shows up and reads a passage from Blake's journal, his diary, dated 4... 12 1957 turns out mr blake had an affair with the maid his spanish maid working that night and on 1 58 a boy was born emilio and he's the rightful heir not deeds so deeds could not have signed away all the shares because he's not the rightful heir Emilio gets up and shouts and dances in this little balcony where he's sitting when he realizes it's him. (laughs) Then he suddenly appears on stage, poof, out of nowhere from balcony to stage. (laughs) And then he fires Chuck, Emilio does, who gets escorted out kicking and screaming. It's a very, very good ending for Chuck. I did like that. It was, but at the same time, this this is what bothered me was that we spent a lot of this movie where Deeds goes from, you know, happy-go-lucky, innocent guy Mm -hmm. to he starts beating the shit out of people that kind of wrong him or wrong people. So I kind of felt like Chuck deserved a little bit of a beating. Like, you know, where where did Deeds, like, how come he didn't snap on Chuck? Really? That's what you wanted? It's not that I wanted it. It was just that it kind of felt you were leading that direction because how many times did did we see Deeds beat the hell out of somebody that did something that was wrong? Right. And, you know, it felt like Chuck, he really wronged a lot of people. So there should have been like, you know, like some kind of beating coming from him. So out in the hall now, privately, Babe apologizes to Deeds, thanks him for saving her life. And she says, you know, when you said to me that you didn't know who I was, I realized I don't really know who I am. So I went home and did some soul searching. And then she rattles off a list of things about herself that she's realized at the lake when you saved my life which i never got a chance to properly thank you for you said that you didn't know who i was and it made me realize i don't know who i am So, so i started working on it and here's what i got so far my name is babe bennett i grew up in syosset long island i have brown eyes and i don't know what my natural hair color is anymore when I was in fifth grade, I got a crush on Walter Cronkite, and, and I really did have that Holly Hobby notebook I was telling you about. I love Bruce Springsteen, Almond Roca, and Abbott and Costello movies. I, I don't like licorice or my ankles. More importantly, I know that I messed up real bad, and I'd be willing to spend the rest of my life begging you to give me another chance, because I am so deeply in love with you, and... I know that it's definitely that forever kind of love that... You're crazy. You have beautiful ankles. (laughs) Let's go home. 
And then they kiss and go back inside where Emilio is firing people left and right. <laughs> and then he decides to keep Cecil. You have to keep, Ce- keep Ce- Cecil. I mean, but plus on top of the fact, what is Cecil going to do if he loses his job? He's got a spastic colon. <laughs> so Emilio thanks Babe and Deeds and asks Deeds, what would you like for a thank you in return? And Deeds says, nothing, just your friendship. And they turn to leave. And Emilio says, wait a minute, how about a billion dollars? <laughs> and Deeds says, okay. And then everybody claps and cheers and Deeds and Babe leave. <sighs> I was very happy that it turned out the way it turned out with Emilio being the heir. That was really a fun twist for me, but we didn't get enough of it. Like at the end, I really wanted him to get more of like, what's it going to be like with him in charge, you know? Yeah, I, I, I felt like I, I wanted that, or at least I wanted like to see a little glimpse into Deeds and his, his friendship or something. Like, just give us give us a little bit more Emilio. Emilio! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so back now at the pizzeria, Deeds gets excited because a letter from Hallmark has arrived saying that they bought one of his cards. Woohoo! He tells Jan and Babe, who's there, she's wearing a Deeds Pizzeria shirt. It's the one that I wrote for you, he tells Babe. And then we suddenly get, oh, she says she's so proud of him. And they kiss and we see this giant rock on her finger. So obviously they got married. Then we get various shots of people reading this card out loud. And it's the same card, you know, the schlub one from earlier. So what made me laugh, though, during all these different shots of all these different people was Cecil sitting on the bench with that lady Kitty in Mandrake Falls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Reading it to her. I, it's I, so I, cute. Th- that one was because uh, it was only two out of them that I actually liked. It was that one. And I'm sure your other you, you must have liked the other one. Emilio laying by oh, a fireplace and he's stroking. Forget- we see some ladies painted toes. He's stroking her foot <laughs> and reading the card. That, that one wasn't bad, but like I said, I think that's the only time the foot fetish kind of got a little like, okay, we get it with the foot fetish. Right. I, I, and then I like Rob the, Schneider. Yes. That's the one I like. And he still has the cat. Oh, from the fire scene. Yep. So he kept the cat. Yeah. I don't know why that lady would tolerate that. They were her cats, but okay. Well, I mean, I, I don't think she knew where all her cats landed, to be honest. <laughs> Flying cats. Yeah. So then the movie finishes with Deeds saying the last line of the card and they kiss. Outside, everyone in town has a a new red Corvette. There's the town is just lined. Main Street is lined with Corvettes. And we see Murph in his and he has to yell it out in case we were all too stupid to know that with all this money, Deeds was going to do nice stuff. He says, I can't believe Deeds bought us all the same car or something like that. We all did go to see this movie, so obviously we did need some help. (laughs) The thing that was funny to me, though, is we see Crazy Eyes in his, driving it, and he crashes into a tree outside of his little place where he lives. Why is he driving with those eyes? (laughs) I have no explanation for that one, but I love it anyways. (laughs) And then we cut to black, music plays, roll credits, the end. Thoughts, feelings, comments? (laughs) <laughs> uh, I, I cannot explain why I like this movie. I understand it's dumb. I get a lot of people don't like it. I don't understand why I like it, but I do. Even more so now that I know that it tortured you. There is that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's jump to three questions. All right. Have you seen the original film on which this is based called Mr. Deeds Goes to Town? I have not. I actually did not know this was based on anything until you told me. So I uh, actually kind of want to go see it now. I don't know where it's, it's at, but I will search for it and see if I can find it because I want to see it. I'm sure it's going to be a far better movie than this was. So I have seen it. Mr. Deeds Goes to Town from 1936, a Frank Capra directed motion picture starring Gary Cooper. It won the Academy Award the following year for Best Director, Frank Capra. You would know the name Frank Capra from your favorite Christmas movie, It's a Wonderful Life. (laughs) That's not really my favorite Christmas movie, but... I know, I know, I know. I I mean, I I do have to say, though, like, It's a Wonderful Life is a well-directed movie. 
So going off of that, it probably that, that tells me like this might be a decent movie then. So I'm not a, a fan of It's a Wonderful Life, but Frank Capra did direct one of my favorite comedies of all time, Arsenic and Old Lace. Oh, that's a great movie too. Yeah. So that made me, after I saw that, I was like, ooh, now I want to watch Mr. Deeds Goes to Town. So I did watch it first so that when I was watching Mr. Deeds, I would be able to go, oh, they they pulled that from that movie. They grabbed that bit from that movie, you know, that way. So turns out the movie's not that much better than Mr. Deeds. I don't know if it's because in the 30s, they're just their style was different, how they wrote their characters and, and the movies. It's an enjoyable watch, but it is very much a bummer film. It's it's a bummer because the Deeds guy is a bumpkin. You know, Gary Cooper plays this bumpkin, which first of all, when you just look at Gary Cooper, you think that is a John Hamm young Alec Baldwin, a leading man, tall, good looking actor of the silver screen. No way this guy is a small town bumpkin. <laughs> no way. Yeah, that feels like that should have been a Jimmy Stewart role. Or exactly. Or somebody, yeah, somebody else. So you meet him. He's the bumpkin. He gets left this company and he gets swindled by reporter babe who needs the big story for the newspaper but the problem is he gets put on trial at the end of the, the last third of this movie is this insanity trial. They try to say that he's insane because he hops on a fire truck and rides to a fire to help with the fire because he wanted to be a fireman. They, they definitely take that bit. They, they say that he's not stable because he does crazy things like generously help people and give money away and do things that are way out of character for a big city guy to do. So they huh. put him on trial for being insane. And he has to have like character witnesses come to his defense. And it's very weird. So I see why they went away from that in the remake. But there's the whole thing with the greeting cards is this, is, is nicked from this movie. He writes greeting cards in this movie okay. he's not an aspiring like i hope to sell him to hallmark it's like that's his job he's a little country bumpkin on a farm who writes greeting cards like that's his shtick so they got that from this movie um the fireman thing the whole thing with babe being a reporter who pulls one over on him um the scene in the restaurant where the people make fun of him and he gets mad and punches a guy out that's directly from the first movie like there's a lot when you watch it that definitely directly went from first movie to remake. And I think that's the problem, which I was going to discuss with you earlier. They just had to decide how much of this do we take? How much of the story and the scenes and the plot points do we take from this movie? And how much do we make Adam Sandler comedy? And I think they had to walk that line and they weren't very successful because they went too heavy into some of the weird, depressing bullshit from the actual first movie versus just leaning into the Adam Sandler comedy of it all. Yeah, I, I, can, I can see that. Like that probably would have, if this would have been just a stand up Adam Sandler romantic comedy, it probably would have worked a little bit better. Yeah. yeah. I, I, now, now I'm very curious to see, especially because you saw this one first. So could that also have influenced you a little bit why you think this one, you're picking up like the darker undertones from it not being funny? That's a really good point. I did watch it first and I was watching for all the comparisons that's a really good point. Because that movie also, not a rom-com. Very uh, bizarre, sad, dour type of movie. So I don't know. Maybe they thought they could punch it up and make it a rom-com with Adam Sandler and Winona Ryder. I, I don't know what they were thinking. I think they should have just gone further. They should have deviated a lot further from the source material. It would have been interesting. And, and then also just because as far as source mater material goes, like it goes back even further than that. Because when, when you told me it was based on the movie, the movie itself is based on a short story. Correct. So it's like, how much did they change from the short story to the Mr. T Mr. Deeds goes to town to this Mr. Yeah. Deeds. So that that's another thing. Like there could be some stuff in there that like, maybe that was like more dark and depressing and they had to change. So there's a lot here that I kind of yeah. feel like could be explored. Well, I'm curious what your thoughts would be after you watch the original. So let me know. All right. So question two, if you are Longfellow Deeds, how does this movie play out differently? Okay. So am I in Deeds' exact situation or does this situation happen in my current life? Uh, either way. Either way. Okay. If this situation happens in my current life, 
uh, I'm going to get a new house. Give Wait, some money. so you you keep the company or do you oh, sell your shares and get the $40 billion? Because uh, you've got to go to New York and sign the papers. Do you give away your shares and take $40 billion or do you keep the company? Honestly, I probably would take the $40 billion because I know nothing about running a company. I feel like you could live a pretty decent existence, sarcasm dripping here, on $40 billion, <laughs> even after taxes. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it's and it's. I understand what Deeds was doing with trying to like, oh, these these people are losing their jobs and stuff like that. It's like, yeah, but you guys are rich motherfuckers to begin with. Like, most of you people are losing your jobs. You're you're not going to have a hard time finding another job. Like the TV reporter guy. It's like, oh, this sucks. This is going to suck for like a fucking week, dude. And then you're going to be on like MSNBC or something with a new job. So it, it's not that bad of an existence. Um, so you're taking the, the money and and selling and then doing what? Yeah. Uh, then then for 40 billion, it's like, then I'm, I'm going to live a good life, man. I'm, I'm going to like, you know, take care of some people, uh, that need help in my life, fix up some houses, um, fix up my house, maybe get a new house, okay. uh, hire a personal assistant to take care of me. So I don't even have to get out of bed if I, if I want to like eat. an Emilio, you need an Emilio. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I'm going to get an Emilio, uh, who's going to change my socks, wash me, feed me. Basically, I will never leave my bed. <laughs> <laughs> that's what a significant other is for get one of those <laughs> I, I, I would do that but i got a feeling like any significant other i have would probably not want to do that for me <laughs> oh wah wah <laughs> <laughs> well i mean like are you gonna have someone that's gonna like are you gonna take care of the person in the bed like they don't need they're not actually bedridden they're just too lazy they don't want to get out of they're bed. just lazy yeah so like you're gonna wash them and feed them and take care no, of them to be honest, yeah, I wouldn't marry that person to begin with if they're that lazy. Yeah, exactly. Good point. <laughs> yeah, that, that's why rich people go with hookers. So, <laughs> oh, so if it happens to me, uh, I don't sell. I would hire somebody. I'd fire Chuck and have Cecil and somebody else, like somebody else that is a decent human, uh, run the company for me. And I go back to my life as usual, but with the money. The guy was wealthy, right? Who Blake Media, he owned all of it. He was wealthy. So I, I just assume that lifestyle, like I'll, um, not lifestyle, but like living with money and keep the company. I don't sell. I, I mean, you could so. do that, but then you, you've got to trust in the fact that people are going to run your company correctly. Uh, you've got to like, you're, you're setting yourself up for a lawsuit. So if anything happens at the company, like you get somebody who- Well, the company has been running itself for- decades so i'm sure it's i'm sure it's fine <laughs> it could be it could be but i mean you gotta remember this 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 company that this story takes place in 2002 people did not get offended as easily you know you have that happen today and like you get the wrong news anchor saying the wrong thing you got a lawsuit in your lap that's a good point <laughs> i would still take a gamble on it though i would say all right is that it for i mean now you are got me second guessing whether or not i'll sell the company Basically, that's the whole reason I'm ripping your decision apart, because now I'm thinking, well, shit, maybe I should have kept the company. Too late. You're already sold. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm already screwed. Now now I'm in the shower soap in my ass. So it's like, I don't know what the hell to do. <laughs> so you're the Marty in this scenario. You're not even the deeds. <laughs> uh, yeah, apparently I'm the Marty. I, I don't even get babe. All right. Question three. Where does this fall for you in rankings amongst Adam Sandler comedy productions? I made a little list of all the comedies and honest to God, I came out with six. I like six of his comedies and he had a bunch. So I'm curious, is this a favorite? Is this near the top of the list? Uh, you must like a bunch more of his movies than I do from what it sounds like. I, I do. I, I'm, I'm curious, though, because you do you did the air quotes and you said comedies. So I'm really curious what you consider a comedy and what you don't consider a comedy of his. So I'll give you a few at a time and I'll tell you which one out of the, I'll give you. OK, let's play a game. I'll okay. give you a list of like three of his movies. And I only thought one of them was funny. And you can pick which one you think I think was funny. OK, you want to do that? Yeah, let's let's do that because I'm curious now. All right, so we've got blended pixels and murder mystery. Which one do you think I thought was funny? Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, 
I, I'm going to say I don't believe you liked Blended. I'm going to say no on Blended. I, I think you're going to be a murder mystery person. I, I think because that had, yeah, because that seems like it had a story. And I, and you seem like you're not the kind of person who would like Pixels, which is a shame because Pixels is a lot of fun. It was an amusing movie. I didn't find it funny. So out of Blended, Pixels, and Murder Mystery, you like all those? Yes. Out of the three of them, Blended made me laugh more. But story-wise, Murder Mystery was better. So how about Click, Grown Ups, and You Don't Mess With the Zohan? Which one of those do you think I thought was funny? You Don't Mess With the Zohan. Correct! <laughs> Correct! I did not like it on the first time watch, if you can believe that. I hated it. And then I watched it again, kind of liked it. Third time, really laughing. And now I've seen it six or seven times and I laugh like an idiot the whole all the time now. <laughs> <laughs> but for you, out of Click, Grown Ups, and Don't Mess with the Zohan, do you find any of those funny? Okay, so the problem with this is that I'm still, because there's some Adam Sandler movies I missed. Don't mess, mess with the Zohan, I have not seen yet. And Click, I just recently picked up a while ago and I have not watched yet. Oh, so the only wow. One yeah, yeah, so the only one I've seen is Grown Ups, which I absolutely love. Okay, so let's move on to Mr. Deeds, Little Nicky, and Big Daddy. Which one do you think I liked? Ooh, I, I'm definitely going to pick Little Nicky for you. Nope. Really? Nope. Big Daddy. Big Daddy. Because it, it had a lot of heart in it. So yeah. That's why I'm it was surprised funny. you liked it. Yeah? Yeah. Like you don't, you do not picture, I do not picture you as the kind of person that likes a movie with heart. I picture oh, you going more to combat and like ripping the heart out of the film. Stop it. I loved Big Daddy. <laughs> yeah. Fucking Kano over there just taking the heart out and everything. <laughs> for you, Big Daddy, Little Nicky, Mr. Deeds. You find them all funny? Yes or no? Uh, Little Nicky was not one I really enjoyed. It could be one that like maybe the more I watch it, I would enjoy it. Okay. Uh, Mr. Deeds, I like. Big Daddy, uh, I absolutely love. I think that's one of his best movies. Okay. Next bunch, we've got Hubie Halloween, The Wedding Singer, and The Water Boy. Which one do you think I like out of those three? I'm going to go with The Water Boy. Oh, sir, have we met? No, <laughs> the wedding singer. That is my 80s experience to a T and it's hilarious. I, I honestly, I knew it was going to be the wedding singer. I was just hoping against hope it was going to be Waterboy because so I'm you the like... only per I, I'm not a fan of the wedding singer. Like it was good. It was definitely good, but it was not, it's not my favorite. It's definitely not my favorite. See, I feel like he and Drew Barrymore have the best chemistry of any leading lady he's been put with oh easily I, I hands down that's the best he's ever worked with and I, I like all three of their films so for me wedding wedding singer is at the bottom of the three it's not my favorite what about Waterboy and hubie halloween are those pretty funny for you I, I enjoyed the hell out of hubie halloween it was stupid it was the one of the dumbest things i've ever seen but i absolutely loved how dumb it was uh it made okay. me laugh Waterboy was good i, I think Waterboy was one that it was a little overrated because mm -hmm. a lot of people said like this was like one of his best films and everything. And it was good, but I got tired of all the quotes and I got tired of like, you know, like hearing about it. Okay. The next three, we've got Airheads, Billy Madison, and Happy Gilmore. Which one do you think I like? Ooh. Okay. This is actually a hard one because I could see you going airheads because you get classic Brendan Fraser in that one too. So this is like the three, this is like three great actors. Well, okay. We'll say three actors that at the beginning, and they actually did a really good performance in that, but early Adam Sandler is fucking hilarious. So happy Gilmore and Billy Madison are just piss your pants funny at times. I'm going to go with happy Gilmore. You are correct. That to me is one of the best comedies of all time. That movie has me laughing. It's so clever. It's so well written. It's so well acted. Billy Madison, I hated. And Airheads was okay. I didn't think it was super funny. Airheads to me is funny, but it, it was not an Adam Sandler film because it was like it, you had, it's an ensemble. You've got like, you know, two other people in there to kind of share the whole experience. So you're watching yeah. for all three of them. Billy Madison is hilarious when you are young. 
it just doesn't I, age. Well. I was gonna say, yeah, a lot of yeah, young like, men like, find it hilarious. Yeah, like growing up and, and like fucking high school, middle school, shit like that. Like I would rent the hell out of that tape. We would quote it. Um, you know, O'Doyle rules. It, it's just fucking hands down great funny comedy. And then you hit, you get out of high school, you grow up, you know, you get some hair on your balls and it kind of changes a little bit. Uh, <laughs> Happy Happy Gilmore just aged well. It, it remains hilarious. Everything about the fucking movie. I mean, like, I I love the whole, you know, uh, his uh, his mentor in heaven with the fucking alligator and the armor. It's like, that's just, I love that movie. The Price Agreed. is Wrong, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then our last bunch, I've got four. So we've got Jack and Jill, 50 First Dates, Spanglish, and I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry. Which one of those four do you think I like? If your favorite is Jack and Jill, we get to be best friends forever. <laughs> um, have you seen all of those? I have not seen. I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry. Uh, Chuck and Larry. I have not seen Spanglish. I want to say Spanglish sounds like it would be pretentious enough to be right up your alley, but I don't know. So 50 first dates for me. That's okay, Drew I'm Barrymore. Almost- I'm a little surprised, but because uh, I, I didn't think you were going to like anything after The Wedding Singer. Wedding Singer and Fifty First Dates are my two favorite Adam Sandler movies because it's him and Drew Barrymore at their peak chemistry. Clever movies, well written, the whole the whole shebang. I love those movies. Okay, all right, yeah. I, I mean that that's out of, out of, if I had to pick one out of those four, I mean obviously I can't pick the other two. Um, I would go with Fifty First Dates. That that's like. Yeah. That's, I think that's my favorite of the Drew Barrymore ones. And then it's going to go blended after that. So you liked Jack and Jill is what you're saying. I liked Jack and Jill. It was the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. I watched it with my girlfriend and she liked it and she didn't know anyone else who was going to like it. So she introduced you to it. She introduced me to it. We watched oh, it together okay. over the phone and she died laughing because i died laughing because i was just like what the fuck am i watching the whole time i was like this is so stupid like okay i I get why people hate it i really do like i I do not blame people for hating that movie yeah but i it made me laugh at least i haven't seen it i don't think i ever want to watch it (laughs) to be honest half of his movies i have not enjoyed or seen So, okay, so that was all the comedies I could come up with off his list, uh, aside from sequels and dramas and stuff. So out of all of those that we just covered, where does kind of Mr. Deeds fall in that for you? Is it kind of middle of the pack or is it more near the top? It's more middle of the pack because there are ones that I I enjoy more because uh, there's a couple you didn't even name, like uh, the one with him and Jennifer Aniston. was. Yes, I did. Murder Mystery. No, no, no. They, They did one before that. They did one where they went to Hawaii. Oh, uh, just, just go, go with, with it? it. Yes. Oh, I, I, I skipped like that over one. that one. Sorry. Yeah, I mean that's okay because I don't. I didn't think you were going to like it anyways. <laughs> uh, I I like that one because it's got a couple actors and in there that I enjoy. It, it's stupid. It made me laugh. Okay. Um. So so Deeds Mr. is middle of the pack. Yeah, Mister Deeds is middle of the pack. It, it's it's top of the pack is like grown ups, Big Daddy, uh, Blended, Fifty First Date, stuff like that. So, so I'm just curious to double back real quick to Big Daddy. You found it more mushy than comedy? No, no. I, I think Big Daddy is actually one of his better movies. It, it's. I just didn't think you were going to like it. I did not expect that to be one that you would you would pick. To me, it's cute. It's funny. It hit. It hits all the notes that Mr. Deeds did miss. I felt the. I just Mr. Deeds has some characters that I really enjoy, and it's got a story that like I didn't hate. I. I, I kind of like the little non-love story we'll call it because i i see what you're saying now how it's not traditionally a romantic comedy deeds no not at all they don't give you anything to latch on to to care two shits about them having a real relationship in fact i found her so unlikable and the bullshit that she's she's lying every two seconds to get her story that i was not rooting for her or for them i was irritated that they end up together in the end honestly <laughs> So what you're telling me is you don't believe in love. You hate love. So that this is this is my takeaway from this. Yes, I hate love. Just ask my husband. Hate it. <laughs> hate it. <laughs> I, I, I I was rooting for them just because, like, you know, I wanted her to get her shit together. She obviously fell in love with the guy. So, you know, get your get your shit together and go get your man. But see, that's why it was bullshit to me. Because she falls in love with him and confesses her love. And the whole time he's like not knowing the real her. And so I actually liked when he says to her, I I don't know who you are. 
great. You love me. Thanks. But <laughs> I don't know yeah. you. So I was, yeah, irritated that they end up together. Well, th- I mean, we could have skipped over the actual love story. <laughs> right. We didn't need that. <laughs> All right, so that is going to wrap up our discussion on 2002's Mr. Deeds. If anyone out there is interested in checking it out, it is currently, at the time of this recording, available for pay streaming on Amazon Prime and free on Sling TV. So I want to thank you for joining me today, sir. Hopefully I didn't ruin this too much for you. I'm glad you still like it. (laughs) Uh, I, I, I still like it. I mean, like, I feel a little dirty having to listen to you talk shit about it, but I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll go, <laughs> I, I will go take a shower and, and, and use our sponsor this week, Marty's ass soap. You know, when your ass is dirty, you look to Marty to clean your ass. So I, I will, I will just wash off with that lather up the cheeks really good and, and feel better now. Fair. Marty's ass soap. Does it have a scent? Smells like ass. I was going to say maybe despair. <laughs> Despair and ass. I mean, despair and ass kind of smell the same, to be honest. All right. Well, thank you for joining me. And we want to thank all of you for listening. So until next time, goodbye. Crazy eyes. Hey, how you doing, pal? I got your pizza for you just the way you like it. Oh, yes. French fries and Oreos. You know me all too well, Jeez. What are you in for? I'm doing a one-nighter for biting Ed the Mailman. I was trying to cast a spell on me, you know, like a wizard or something. Are you sure about that? I don't know. Maybe he was just waving. Hey, who are your friends? Oh, this is Chuck and Cecil. They're from New York. I don't like them. Okay. <laughs> Johnny McEnroe. Oh, look at DJ hanging out with McEnroe. That's awesome. <laughs> I love the Beach Boys. DJ was always the best speaker in school. DJ? I thought we were watching Scooby-Doo. Crazy eyes. Oh. All right. Go. Peanut butter and gumballs. Nice combo. Don't worry about what happened. Time heals all things. Except these crazy eyes. Oh, it's good to be home. I know that much. I wasn't talking to you, Deeds. I was talking to that squirrel over there. Oh. Although it is a shame about that cedar fella tearing apart your uncle's company and firing all those nice people. Where would you hear that? I watch the stock market channel all the time. I just watch because I suspect that anchor man of being an evil leprechaun. He can bullshit everybody else, but he ain't fooling me. Can you believe Deed bought us all these? <laughs> Damn, these things are fast. I'm okay! <laughs> I'm okay! Hey listeners, Drive-In Dave here saying we know you have a lot of options when it comes to podcasts, so we want to thank you so much for listening to ours. Please be sure to follow us on all your social media platforms. Join us in the Bad Movie Conversation. We're on Facebook with a Let's Talk Turkeys page, as well as a discussion group where you can chat with other people who also love bad movies. We're also on Instagram at Let's Talk Turkeys, all one word, plus we're on Twitter with the handle at Gobble Podcast. That's G-O-B-B-L-E-P-O-D-C-A-S-T. And of course, you can always email us direct at Let's Talk Turkeys, all one word, at yahoo.com. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.